Welcome back guys. I'm Jason, KM4ACK. Today we're going to talk about recent failures on my set exercise. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey guys, before we get going, I've got to give a shout out to these eight gentlemen. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description. All right, so on the recent exercise over in the Great Smoky Mountains, uh, I had several failures that I kind of wanted to take a few minutes and go through today. Uh, some of the lessons learned and some of the ways that uh, I overcame some of the failures that I experienced. Now, the first thing is don't rely on any one tool. If you watched the video last week, you'll know that I uh, was unable to get a connection on JS8 Call. Uh, I couldn't hear anything and I couldn't be heard. Now, I'm not sure if that was uh, due to the terrain and the hole that the cabin basically sat in, uh, and more or less my antenna was in that same hole, uh, but we were surrounded by uh, rock faces, or, or uh, mountain walls rather, on uh, three sides, and those walls were, I'm guessing, 100 feet tall. Uh, and the only opening was to the south. Now, I still thought I would have gotten some NVIS propagation out of that, uh, but that just wasn't the case. Uh, so as huge of a fan of JS8 Call as I am, that just didn't work out for me. So never rely on any one given tool. Uh, it, you know, if that had been the only application that I had uh, thought to, thought that I was going to use during that exercise, I would have pretty much been hosed. Uh, but fortunately, I had WinLink installed, I had FL Digi installed, uh, I've got an APRS DigiPeter on there. I've got several tools in the tool bag that I can try to utilize to get a message out. In this particular exercise, WinLink was my primary means of communication. Uh, and then 80 meter JS8 call uh, worked very well for us uh, during the one night of testing that we did. And I'm guessing that was probably um, 300 mile range, somewhere around in there, 250, 300 miles uh, between me and N0 JPD when we did the testing. But just don't rely on any one tool. Have them all installed on your uh, Raspberry Pi and make sure you practice with all of those, uh, you know, from time to time to stay familiar with it. Uh, you you want to be able to pass WinLink messages over packet and RDOP, uh, RDOP for HF communications. You want to know how to use JS8 Call and FL Digi. So uh, we've got all those tools for a reason. Let's uh, stay current and stay up to practice on all of them and never rely on just one particular tool. Now, something else that crossed my mind during this exercise, uh, I had all of these emails coming into my WinLink inbox. And if you're not familiar with the way WinLink works, WinLink does not store your emails on a server after you've downloaded them. Once you download them, uh, from the WinLink system, the copy on your hard drive is the only copy of those emails that exist. And this got me to thinking, uh, I've got a backup card for the Raspberry Pi and had the Raspberry Pi crashed, uh, for whatever reason wouldn't have booted up off of my primary SD card, I could have always grabbed the backup and got the Pi back up and running. But I would have lost all of my emails. So I didn't do anything about it on this particular trip. Uh, thankfully, it, it wasn't ever an issue, but it's something to keep in mind and something that we may address going forward. I'm still trying to think that through. Uh, at first, I'd kind of considered a basic little script to back up uh, those emails, maybe to another thumb drive. Uh, and I'm still thinking along those lines, but I think I'm going to go back in and maybe add that as an additional feature to the PAP menu system to make it easy as possible when we're ready to back up those emails. Now, something else that would have definitely come in handy here, due to weather and uh, the topography around the cabin, uh, I just couldn't generate as much solar energy this year 
uh, as I generated in the past. So a larger battery would have definitely been uh, a huge help to me in this particular case. I was still able to make connections uh, every morning and every evening. Uh, and sometimes, you know, I might be on the air for an hour at a time. And using lower power modes like WinLink, like JSA Call, uh, helps us to conserve battery, but a larger battery could have definitely been useful in this case. So I'll probably consider upgrading to the Dakota Lithium, uh, their newer battery that they've got out. I believe it's 23 amp hours and I'll probably make the jump to that battery this year. Now, going hand in hand with that uh, is solar panels. Uh, I only had the 130 watt solar panel with me, and again, because of topography, I wasn't able to gather as much sunshine during the day as I was able to last year. So the best day, I think I got a little over four amp hours uh, of energy back into the battery. Had I have had two of those 30 watt solar panels, I would have gotten uh, somewhere between eight and nine amp hours back into the battery. So it would have at least filled up the 10 amp hour battery that I was running this year, although it probably still wouldn't have filled up that 23 amp hour battery if I do decide to upgrade. So let's take a minute and talk about WinLink uh, under disaster or off grid circumstances. Uh, guys, if you're sending an email to an operator that is relying strictly on HF comms to gather WinLink, let's keep our attachments uh, to a minimum and only add attachments when they contain absolutely mission critical data. Uh, one particular gentleman sent me a screenshot of uh, my position report that I had put out uh, to let people know where I would be operating and what times I would be operating. And he was kind enough to shrink that down. I think it was only like 29 kilobits. Uh, kilobytes? Yeah, kilobytes. Uh, but anyway, it, it was very small. He did shrink that down. But over HF, remember, we're still working with somewhere in the neighborhood of a 300 baud connection. So it's extremely slow. It will get the job done. It's fantastic uh, for passing messages, but it's not, uh, it, it's not a race car mode by any stretch of the imagination. So if you're going to send an email into a disaster area, uh, keep those messages as brief as possible and eliminate, uh, you know, eliminate the thought of, of putting attachments with that email unless it's absolutely critical. Now, while we're talking about uh, WinLink, one other thing, if you're replying to somebody uh, that you know is just relying on HF communications, don't just hit the reply button and put your reply right at the top. Once you hit reply, go ahead and delete out everything that was sent to you in the original email. Again, this just helps cut that data uh, down to a bare minimum to get our message across. And the last thing is don't give up. When one particular mode or one particular band doesn't work, don't just give up. We've got a lot of tools in our toolbox. Uh, so when JS8 call over 40 meters wasn't working, yes, I was frustrated because I really thought that was gonna be one of my primary means of communications. Uh, I wanted to post up a position report using WinLink and then sit down and uh, play radio for a couple of hours, uh, maybe in the afternoon, evening, through the night, uh, using JS8 Call. That didn't work out. Uh, you can't give up though right there. You've got to go to another one of your tools in the toolbox and keep trying. We're communicators. Let's communicate. Whatever the means, uh, you know, whatever's working for us, let's use. And if something's not working, Let's move on to the next tool in our toolbox. So there was a lot of lessons to be learned, some challenges that I had to deal with, and I kind of had to rethink a few things that uh, you know, I originally thought was going to go one way, and that didn't work out. So keep at it. Don't, uh, don't ever give up when one thing fails. There's uh, lessons to be learned in every one of these exercises. All right, guys, I greatly appreciate uh, all of your support, all of your views. 
Uh, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off, and we will see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.